via Zoom by Professor Fred Binker. He's a clinical epidemiologist to delve further into the discussion about mandatory vaccination. Good evening, Prof, and thanks for your time. What do you make of the states made by the petitioners that uh, states that the risk of the vax outweighs the benefit? That's the data that you have seen supporting you of this claim. So thank you very much, and uh, good evening to your listeners. And uh, yes, this information that has just come out has generated a lot of discussion we've all looked at our data and the risk for not taking the vaccine far far away uh, uh, the benefits for not taking the vaccine so we have we have no data to support their their point our data indicates that the vaccines are working all over the world and not only in ghana but all over the world Today, we have had over 10 million vaccinations that have been uh, given in our country, in Ghana, but we have no explosion of any safety concerns here. So the vaccine is working, it's reducing, uh, it's, it, it's doing exactly what it's intended to do, to reduce severe disease, mild disease, and also death. Our, our uh, admissions have gone down, our ICUs are still uh, empty, uh, are not completely overwhelmed, and the number of people who are dying is going down. Well, but some people have questioned the relevance of taking the vaccine, for instance, where there's a chance of reinfection. How do you convince many, like the 11 doctors, that there's a need for mandatory vaccination? So the vaccines were clearly designed to reduce disease, severe disease, and death. These, these are not transmission-blocking vaccines they do not block transmission. But once you have had the vaccine, the chances that you get reinfected are less than those who have not got the vaccine. So in that space, it is creating an environment that allows many people not to be as susceptible as they would have been if they were naive and have no vaccines at all. Also, a lot of people have spoken about the Omicron variant and its milder side effects, hospitalization, and even deaths. Do you see the Omicron variant providing any kind of herd immunity or an opportunity for such? Well, you know, when this thing started two years ago, one, one uh, strategy was to try and get herd immunity. And if you remember, the United Kingdom tried that and they had to stop very quickly. WHO does not, we all want herd immunity but we want herd immunity through vaccination and not to make sure that uh, to expose certain parts of the population to the infection and lose them through death rather than to vaccinate everybody. Vaccinations are not leading to death. So the way to get herd immunity is to vaccinate as many people as possible. And that is why the mandates are being put together. We are trying to achieve herd immunity through controlled infection, not to a wild variant that nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. So vaccination, yes, and vaccination, yes, is the only route that we can accept to herd immunity. Grateful for your time this evening. Professor Fred Binka is a clinical epidemiologist there in a conversation with us on Monday tree vaccination. Just remember also that a number of individuals are in court on this matter, including Samiji Mfi, Director of Communications of the NDC. But the Ghana Police Service has interdicted a personnel captured on video perceived to be in a drunken state. The service in a news release published January 12 said its attention was drawn to the video that one of its personnel in uniform possibly drunk. Oh, that's a video you see on the screen there. The service says the said officer had been identified and has also been interdicted for investigations to commence. The officer has been assigned to a clinical psychologist for evaluation and necessary support. Also, the police says the suitability of the officer to remain an officer will be determined and dependent on his evaluation.